Week of Trinity 5, Friday, going to what's still there. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Psalm 122, verse 1. Dearly beloved, where is the most wonderful and most dreadful place on earth? Surely it is where the one holy, just, righteous Lord God Almighty is present with his people in his grace, mercy, kindness, and love. At such a place, the faithful congregate at the invitation of the Lord to come into his presence with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Within the walls of such a place, whether it be a cabin or a cathedral, under a crossed steeple or a canopied tree, the children of God hear his word of pardon and peace, are cleansed of all transgressions in Christ's baptismal grace, and feast at the Lord's Supper for the remission of sins. Truly God receives sinners and eats with them. Jesus, the Son of God, has made this possible in his incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. Therefore, dear sinner, come, for all things are now ready. With a gladdened heart, raise your voice and add your Amen when hearing the invitation of those who say, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Today, we consider a reality that some do not understand and others know about by experience all too well. It is the reality of coming home. First, we'll consider a scripture section about the younger son who realizes that he had it better at home and devises a plan to return to his father's place. Then we'll make several points of application. The text is a half verse about the younger son. It reads, And he arose and came to his father. Luke 15 verse 20 a. There are two things happening here. The younger son is going from, and he is going to. He is going from a life in this world that has used him and left him lying in the mud. He's been living and working in a pigsty, literally and figuratively. The younger son is also going to, returning to his father's place. We have assumed that it would be there, haven't we? Well, there's no question about whether or not the father's house would still be there. Surely the church will be there for those who repent and come home, right? It is most certainly true that the one church will remain. God has promised that the church will remain forever and never perish. What is not certain is whether or not a local congregation will still be there, will still remain Christian. The building might remain, the people might be the same. However, there is no guarantee that the doctrine and practice of the pastor and congregation will continue to be Christian. They may very well depart from the Christian faith as society invades the congregation and the old sinful natures of those within rise up with agendas of their own. This departure from the Christian faith is rampant today as pastors claim that the Lord God is just one of many gods or that everyone worships the same God. People are directed away from the means of grace for their salvation and pointed to themselves. Some are told to pray, struggle, and wrestle with God until they feel forgiven. Hogwash! That's just another pigsty. Others no longer hear the forgiveness of sins by the grace of God through faith in Christ, crucified and risen. The law is softened, the gospel is redefined, and suddenly Jesus is no longer present. He is cast aside and his word is replaced with featured entertainers and cute stories. What will you hear and discover this Sunday? What will the younger son find when he returns home? Stay tuned. Prayer Lord, have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hymn number 265, stanzas 3 and 5. Forgive, O Lord, our sins forgive. Grant us thy grace and let us live. Convince thy foes throughout the land that godless counsels shall not stand. Preserve thy little flock in peace, nor let thy boundless mercy cease. To all the world let it appear that thy true church indeed is here.